I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friends, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed them a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch, and I try to do it, but I end up, try I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna start with our bread. Okay. I'm gonna use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread, because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. You <laughs> choose what you would like. I'm gonna okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm gonna try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? we'll see, I this do both sides. This is the sides. side that's gonna go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically wanna kinda smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did wanna do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not you know, smothering it, but I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but mm, okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which I, shocked me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer on the counter. My grandma did that, my mom did that. And then it's nice and soft, exactly. you're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you, did I do enough? Okay, now we're gonna use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice, like yes. some of my so, white American that... cheese is thick. Right. So if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what? we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ooh. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh, already, already screwed all right. up. It's all right, this is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but it's okay. okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, Pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> exactly. So and that's your lunch. Yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, what did we put on this? Nothing? No. Nope. No, because no, no oil, no, no. cooking the, spray. The butter is, is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. After that, oh, by the way, we have some. Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and. That's funny because I, what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half for a pot? Not glass, I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot, you could use a pot. Okay. Whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, 
use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um, I know. Right, we're hot. gonna flip them now. See, I find that you hard. You need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that to make okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that see, looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. Perfect. But now the now cheese is not melted. Press it down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our, right away goes the yep. burger dome. I'm going to get one of these. Right. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, like is, that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. OK. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. OK. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, see, look at no. the meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, look great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, rectangles. rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mmm. Mm. It's good, mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh, my mm. gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. <laughs> we did it. Grilled cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We're going to make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay? Sneaking in vegetables. Yep, is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We want to always season our oh, water yes. before, so you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay, because you're um, a very generous person. Yes, but not with salt, <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like, I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes, so it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb that. I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can... It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger, yeah, just like pour some in. That just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. Okay, how about right. that? Okay. Good, right. good, good. Okay, pour in. This is a pound of elbow a mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. Okay. You should be good. Okay. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the... Angel! Microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but... You know what? I on know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which I'm mm -hmm. going to take. That is cheddar. Okay. Eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to... I use the, yeah, the I big like side. I like the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not going to lie. My tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, geez. This is like your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. 
Put it down. Okay. Am I scaring you? <laughs> yes. Scaring you a little bit? I'm scaring myself. Okay. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to break it up because, again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will not. Oh, see? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, there, what we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve three-fourths cup of the cheese. Can okay. it live together? Yep. Okay. Okay, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come yes. over here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower is going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot, and why don't we drain the pasta? Okay. All right. Let me guess. Hot okay. pot. Ooh, it's heavy one, too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta because that's gonna stop the cooking process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water, it'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. Okay, it's not gonna get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you wanna go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Ooh, I better just, bring it in case it's hot. Yeah, just hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, now we are going to cut that open and we're going to pour it right into the blender. So All right, that. so now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One we have whole milk here. You can okay. use 2%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's going to add yeah. flavor. And it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature. If Oh. It's not. You can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. Okay, then what? Okay, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're going to let it go for just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can stop it and just. We want to blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, sound off the children <laughs> alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. Okay, Ooh, that, that looks milky. Little, that looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter All right. and we're just gonna butter our casserole dish. Just How am I doing here. Okay. We're gonna, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go like take but the stick I like and to, stick it around. Yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and let's get the sides Your way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you I know, don't so OCD. You really you are. Go. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. That's a little more. Seem you like can do more. Yeah. yeah, like I like to yeah, get Yeah, I would in get there. a good goop. I usually just take the Perfect. stick. Am I getting the sides? There's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and, and bottom. This is where my type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't want, I want every side done just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up, you know? I want to get an Perfect. A. I want to get an A. A plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay. okay. That's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, gonna be or mise en place. Absolutely. Wow. Or mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay. The first thing we're going to do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that, I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know that a, one stick is- It's about is a half, half of a stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect. And okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right? It's really pretty. It seems like and it's and having it a good time. it smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking <laughs> should be. You can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Crop and then up. when add we the... add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't do that. Because we want to activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we... to you? It's looking good, yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to... I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just am like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're going to add our milky okay, cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I want to get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine <laughs> have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know. I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this a little at a time Switch. thing? 
like no, this, or can I just dump it Since you've already on? added, the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's this is, start to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're going to add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now, is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of, the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly. Cook for one to two minutes until thickened. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another, like, way to tell is if, like, once you kind of lift it, you want to just see some of it, some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah. It's like it a is, baby. You always have to be watching it. It is five minutes of, of like, babysitting. Yeah. All well, right. This seems cooked. Yeah. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right. I'm just going to dump it in. Kind of, yeah. And then just continue to stir. I want to have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part. Yeah, too. this looks pretty so yummy. Cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but and I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the taste. magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it, or are you trusting me? I'm going to trust you. I trust your palate. I think it's a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot, though. Okay. It's pretty tasty. There you go. More? I mean, there's salt in the cheese, naturally, and so, you know, that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm going to grab. Like, I don't want to over salt. The but pasta. I, don't I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can now what happens? put some on. Now, I'm going to break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that it doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the add. pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it off. Okay, you want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's off. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real good. We're gonna I would eat it, it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's going to get so nice and baked and crispy on the top mm -hmm. and because we're going to add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm going to transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Did you feel ready. good about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I will it again, have a but sip I'm just going to Well, you transferred. OK. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got Ready? it? Yeah. Yep. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yep. While you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes, day, could I do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in the fridge, just make sure, you know, you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> Good job. All right. High five. Yay! Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were 
are still in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. And who's this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. So the mac and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers. Yeah. Chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right. And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first why don't you grab the flour. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add three fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with you know the ridged. That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're going to use three egg whites. Have you ever separated? I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try, okay, and you great. can grate me. And then yeah, you can put the um, egg white. You egg white to will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, egg yolk. Yeah. Oh shoot! Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> just and it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. Like, this it's isn't... not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah, that's perfect. But I'm gonna give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh really? It'll it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the oh my gosh, that's shoot, so much right? better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup that the of panko. Yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One and cup just sprinkling of that. it around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just lay just it on the pan. Just lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. It. So it could be a plate, could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously, the word of the day. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point other than like the Parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. Is that enough? That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but it's always a little yeah. it's questionable exactly. whether they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake them. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So just dropping mm -hmm. it? How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? No? And then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? Yes. And you can, can yeah, it. perfect. Okay. That's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is going to get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now.
our country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I can smell the chicken. It's almost done. Yeah. We're going to make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise. OK. We're going to add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. OK. Any old ketchup? Yep. And oh. you can like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like more, mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's, it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants. Oh, this is uh, a, tablespoon? a tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow. Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids, so yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up. Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can or? use that. Whatever. Yeah. Just so it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh. It is the stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm, into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. And then, Dang. perfect. That's good. Okay. Perfect. All right, now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done, mm -hmm. but what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken? Because I think that that's done. Here, okay. do you need to? Oh, you got it. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare obsessively. Stand this there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh, here. Okay. And then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw them on there. And then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And they look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, it got that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and... I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Ooh. Okay. All right, you grab no, that. I still haven't learned this technique I will well. grab... That was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this. And we can eat. Yum. OK, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. OK. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. OK. So be careful. Can That's I hot. Serve you up some? Yes, please. Look at how oh, you see. It's good. And look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm going to see if I can taste a okay, cauliflower. Yep, flour. that's the real test. Well, the real test will, will come. Will come. Let's see. Let's see. I'm just gonna use my hands to take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. Now this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Smells good. Bon appetit. Cheers, bon appetit. Cheers. Okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just wanna it's see. So hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. going to get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no right. It tastes good. There's no right and mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. <laughs> you are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have... Picky eaters combined. Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good. And now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. All right. An I think excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you, too. <laughs> Thank you.
We want them to focus and try to build on positive performance and not focus so much on the bad things that happen because we're all going to have bad things that happen. But our ability to overcome those negatives is going to go a long way in helping us be successful. Coach Nick Saban knows what it takes to be a champion. Throughout his historic 42-year college coaching career, 16 seasons at Alabama, he's produced more NFL first-round draft picks than any other college coach. Quarterback Bryce Young won the Heisman Trophy as a sophomore. Fans are looking to him to deliver another championship. For Nick Saban to get his players to that level, the work doesn't just take place on the field. We sat down with him to talk about his work behind the scenes. First of all, thank you for doing this, sitting down with us. We Glad really appreciate it. it. I wonder, and just going back and thinking about your career as a football coach, was there a moment when you thought, we really need to start talking about mental health in a much more open way than we do with our athletes. Well, I think it started back for me when I was actually going to graduate school. And I got a, um, had a concentration in sports psychology. So I've always had an interest. And therefore, it's been probably 25 years ago, before there was a lot of attention given to mental health, that we were actually trying to provide services for players who may have had some kind of a, a mental health issue to whatever degree. How have you seen players' willingness to talk about it change over the years? Well, I think that in the beginning, a lot of times when we would make suggestions to players that we would like for you to talk to our psychiatrist or sports psychologist, there was kind of a negative sort of reaction to that, like, you think something's wrong with me? Is that why you want me to do this? And uh, so sometimes it took a little bit of convincing that this was something that I do on a regular basis in talking to somebody to try to help my psychological disposition to be successful, to not have issues that will be impediments to me being able to do things the way I'd like to do them. So more recently, I think players have been more forthcoming uh, in terms of sharing what their issues might be, uh, which has been better because we can accommodate them because we have the resources to do that. You know, a whole mental health you know, service here available to the players. How important is that moment when a player gets injured and they're looking at missing games or even missing a season? How important is that moment for trainers to step in and say, this is about whatever your injury is, but it's also about where your head may be. Well, I think that, first of all, we live in sort of a result-oriented world. And, you know, people create a lot of anxiety for themselves by thinking about what they want in the future. Example, simple example for a football player would be, I want to play in the NFL someday. So if that's what they focus on, they create a lot of anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis because they're thinking of the result. They're thinking of the outcome. Where if you can get players to focus on what does it take to get the outcome and let that be their focus. Then when they have issues like an injury, we try to get our players to look at the injuries as this is just a setback. You know, this is an opportunity for you to overcome adversity. How you manage setbacks is also very important to how successful you're going to be. And sometimes they do need help in terms of how do we manage this. Mm -hmm. You talk about anxiety, but it's also a conversation about pressure, too. And all college athletes face pressure, perhaps no college athlete more than the football player here at Alabama. How do you have a conversation with them in managing that pressure? You know, pressure is kind of self-inflicted, and it's self-inflicted because you're focused on results. Uh, we want to focus on winning a championship. Or do you want to focus on what do I have to do each day to be able to be a champion so we'll have a chance to win a championship? There's a lot less anxiety in the second approach, a lot more anxiety when you're worrying about what's going to happen in the future. So um, that's how we try to do it, and we want all the people here to be the best that they're capable of being as a person, as a student, and as a player. And that's a conversation even before the bad things happen that you're having with players. Absolutely, all the time, because we want to be process-oriented. 
and everything that we do here is process oriented. You told me that you went around this building and it was an amazing building. But there's no signs up that says win the national championship. There's no signs up that say win the SEC championship. There is a sign up that says be a champion. So we're trying to even philosophically get guys to focus on a culture of what do you have to do to be successful at what you want to do. How tough is it to get that message through when you are perhaps an athlete like Bryce, who's now had this incredible season, who has the Heisman, the expectations are through the roof for him. How do you bring him back down to the ground? Well, I think, you know, when you talk about expectations, you're talking about outcomes. And again, the best thing Bryce can do is focus on a day-to-day -day basis on what do I have to do to play well? What do I have to do to play to my best of my capabilities? And what everybody else thinks and all the external noise that's created out there, which create expectations, we try to get not to impact the player uh, because that's just going to create a lot of anxiety for you. I mean, we've all been through that. You know, when you walk into a room and you have an expectation and everybody has an expectation for you and you don't have focus on what you're supposed to do, it, it, it really can be a problem. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. Now, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You know, a decade ago, players didn't have to deal with social media the way that they deal with it now. And college athletes just in general. How has that changed the dynamic when it comes to mental health for your players? I think it, uh, from our standpoint, is, you know, you want to be satisfied with yourself. Are you satisfied that you know you did your best to be the best you could be at what you're choosing to do? What's important to you? And how do I have to edit my behavior to be able to do that? Or am I getting all my positive self-gratification from what everybody else thinks? Mm. And if that's the case, then, you know, maybe it's more difficult for me because it really should be about how do I feel about myself? Do I know I'm being the best that I can be, I'm making good choices and decisions, it's going to help me do the things I need to do, or am I just getting self-gratification from what everybody else thinks, positive or negative, and how do those things affect my performance? I mean, a player for this team, when something goes bad on the field, it's not just a couple of people. I mean, they have hundreds or thousands of people in their DMs telling them pretty hateful things. What effect does that have? Well, I'm sure it doesn't have a positive effect, but I think, again, you have to go back to being technical. Okay, why did this happen, and what can I do to fix it? Rather than being so focused on the criticism or what everybody else thinks, because you control your thoughts, you control your feelings, you control what you say, you control what you do. So the more we can get players to focus on that, I think the better chance they have to be able to have success as well as overcome adversity. I tell players all the time, if you're going to be a great competitor, you're going to have to be able to overcome adversity. There can be no great victories in life unless there's adversity because that's what makes it a great victory. 
So your ability to manage that is very important for you to be successful. When you talk about adversity, do you talk about the challenges that they may have and kind of put mental health in that same basket on the same level as the other things that they may face? No question. You know, there's so many guys that have issues that are created by some expectation that they have and their inability to focus on what they need to do to be able to fulfill the expectations that they have. You know, like we have players on our team that instead of being focused on being the best player they can be and control what they can control, they're looking over their shoulder at how am I doing versus the next guy. You know, Coach, you've talked a lot about performance, and everyone knows your guy likes to win. But the stories that I've been hearing today, it's about more than just performance. It sounds like you care about these players. No, there's no question. Um, we, we, you know, our whole goal here is, is a player going to be more successful in life because he was involved in the program? That's what kind of person is he? What kind of character does he have? Does he succeed and develop in a career off the field by how he does in school? And if his goal is to develop a career as a football player, you know, how are we helping him do that? But I think athletics offers a lot of lessons of life, whether it's hard work, perseverance, ability to overcome adversity, pride in performance. You know, all these things are things that I don't care what you choose to do, they would be things that are necessary to be able to do to have success. How tough is it for a player who doesn't go to the NFL after coming from this program or a player who gets injured and no longer plays again? How do you, how do you prepare a player for that kind of disappointment? I don't know that there's any way to maybe prepare them for it. Um, you know, we all have things that are disappointing. And as much as we can help players be able to deal with those things, and I'm a coach, but we have people who are psychiatrists, we have people who are psychologists, uh, we have a lot of mental health experts that we've used for a long, long time that are much better at doing this or helping us be able to know how to do it. I think that's been one of the biggest things with our mental health is they tell us the best way that we can manage a player in terms of helping him be successful based on his personality type and some of the issues that they have. And one size doesn't fit all in how, how you approach people. So not having that information, not having mental health services, we, we may not ever know that. So that's um, been very beneficial through the years in terms of helping us help people. NBC News, streaming free now. Many Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? NBC News, streaming free now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
NBC News, streaming free now. You sort of see it for student athletes kind of across the board as they come in with this expectation that they're going to be perfect. And I wonder if you've noticed that change over the years. Has it, has it become more intense for student athletes in this country? I think probably because there's more attention. Social media has probably done something to do that. I think because we have all those things, sometimes these expectations are created externally, you know, maybe not internally. So you feel like you have to live up to something. I had a player years ago. Uh, I was actually in Julio Jones's class, and Julio Jones is starting in the first game. The other guy's still a third-team guy. He comes to me before the first game, and he says, Coach, I'm really frustrated that I'm still 13. And I said, well, who are you better than? And he says, well, I'm not really better than anybody. And I said, well, what are you frustrated about? He says, everybody thinks I should be playing. So to your point, that's a perfect example of external expectations impacting someone's frustration in terms of their ability to stay focused on the things that they need to do to improve. But do you think that we've kind of lost the plot a little bit when it comes to the intensity that we drive in, in children in this country and, and sports? Um, is, there, is there a philosophy around children and athletics that has changed in this country that is potentially tough when it comes to mental health. I think specialization has created that. And what do you mean by that? Well, I always tell guys, when you're in high school, do everything you want to do. You know, people think I got to focus on being a football player from the time I'm in the ninth grade. But I like playing baseball, I like playing basketball, I like playing, you know, hockey, whatever it is. You should do all those things. But we tend to specialize when someone's 11 years old and they're good at something, we're going to make them be a professional golfer. We're going to make them be a professional tennis player. So what does that kinda, do? Well, I think it can potentially burn people out, yeah. you know, at a young age, because now they feel this pressure and expectation that they have to work so hard at trying to do something that can become a real grind. I think you should you know, sort of enjoy things until you figure out what do I really want to be. And should parents in this country reflect on that too? I think so. Uh, and I think that we need to be careful about how we push people at a young age especially before they've had the opportunity to have the experiences to decide for themselves exactly, you know, what do I want to make this huge commitment to? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What lessons do you think other universities can take from your experience here in Alabama when it comes to mental health? Well, I think we've done this for a long time. Maybe it was just me thinking that I need help. I need help understanding the relationships that I want to be able to develop with players. So I need to know who those players are. 
And sometimes that's difficult for me to figure out with guys coming from all kinds of different socioeconomic backgrounds and all those things that we want to help them from here to get to a, a, a very good place. So we've done this for years, but I would recommend that everybody um, have psychiatrists, sports psychologists, people in mental health areas to be able to help their student athletes uh, be the best version of themselves personally, academically, and athletically. I think it's a tremendous advantage to helping people. Is it tough to get th these big, tough, super successful football players to talk about touchy-feely stuff? I don't think it's as difficult now uh, as it used to be because I don't think the players really look at it as I have something wrong with me. They look at it more like Maybe I could use the help. And it's always good to emphasize with people, take help when help is there to be given. It's not a bad thing. Senior defensive lineman DJ Dale asked for help after experiencing a season-ending knee injury. I was depressed and I didn't even know it. Well, I knew it, but I didn't want to admit it to myself. Dale went to Coach Saban. He told me that he appreciated me and that he knew I was a tough player. And I didn't want him to think that I was like, you know, weak or turning my back against the team, but it was the complete opposite. He's back on the field now, but studies show injuries can trigger depression and other emotional responses, like changes in appetite and lack of motivation in athletes. Dr. Brett McCabe worked with Dale. He's the university's sports psychologist. He's part of a team of more than 20 trained behavioral health professionals at Alabama. There's so many wonderful stories of college athletes that have gone on to, you know, been prominent surgeons, attorneys, um, business owners, philanthropists, and everything. Mm -hmm. And those are the stories I love to hear because when the, when the lights turn off, our fans move on to the next generation of players. But these players are still coming back and they've got their business, their life, their families that are going on, and we want to make sure they're balanced. The transition into college can be overwhelming for any student. And for athletes arriving at the University of Alabama, there's an added pressure. What is it like? showing up as a freshman at this football program and playing in that stadium for the first time. It's surreal. Getting here was a big culture change and just seeing how much people care about football. You come out of the locker room, you get to hear 100,000 plus people. Um, you know, you see the lights when it's a, a night game, stuff like that. It's surreal. I, I can't even describe it. To help athletes adjust to the spotlight, Dr. McCabe works with students from the outset of their college career. How do you start talking to them ab about mental health and what's your message to an athlete who shows up here who's doing fine, mm -hmm. but who you know is going to face challenges they've never dealt with before? I think five or six years ago when I would give a talk on mental health, I may have one or two guys break away on the football team. One or two guys break away and come see me and say, hey, can I come see you later? Now when I give that talk, there'll be 30, 40, because I really think because of the messaging that we're finding across the country where athletes are sharing, and I, I give a ton of credit to the Players' Tribune, the website, um, where players can own the story. If Michael Phelps or Simone Biles or Serena Williams or Kevin Love or DeMar DeRozan, anybody like that is sharing their own story, then that means that what I'm feeling is not abnormal. As a society, mental health is who we are. Our mental wellness is on point it, it's being it's being you know tested every single day particularly in the stresses of today's world and out here mm -hmm. tested in a way that most human beings aren't tested right correct correct you have a college athlete who's 19 years of age goes out there does everything he can and, and or she does and gets beaten in their sport on a play and a fan sends them a message a dm and is angry because of what they invested in their ticket their fandom and now they don't understand that that 19, 20 year old is still 19 or 20 and really doesn't have the life experiences to understand all the different factors. Everything in our athletes world right now is under a microscope and everything's evaluated. And how do they manage that? What, what is your message to them well, in those moments? You need to help them understand that there's an inside game and an outside game. The outside game we can't control. We can't control what fans say, media. All you can control is what you do in the moments that you can control, right? How do you prepare? How do you get ready? And if we can focus them on learning and growing, you know, for some reason in our world, we have this idea that, that the next challenge is the definer of all of our future challenges. And so for them, they sit there and they're like, well, I got this next challenge, this is the next thing. And yet they forget how far they've come. 
and how much growth that they've developed. You can watch the maturation of our athletes here over the years that they're at the University of Alabama, and it's remarkable. It's a remarkable progression that you see as we get them ready for life outside of here. Has the pressure changed on a student athlete in, say, the last 10 years, and is it harder for them today? It seems like it is. I think the standards and expectations that we have for athletes is much higher than we've ever seen. It used to be that underclassmen were never even considered for the Heisman Trophy, and then Johnny Manziel wins it, who was in his first year of playing, really a significant role. So now that becomes the standard. If you have to take three or four years, are you behind the curve, right, in mm -hmm. theory? Mm -hmm. I think it also drives into the nature of who we are as people is that we're perfectionists, right? People great at their craft are perfectionists by nature. So that pressure is an internal drive. A lot of times it's really not what we do outside. Our standards have been the same from the very beginning. The difference is, is that our kids are coming in with more pressure, more standards to perform, and more expectations from the world around them. And it's not just football. It's everything. You know, when we talk about mental health, our priority in the conversation generally is about students coming forward, you know, having this open environment so they can talk about it. What is the responsibility of our society and the adults in creating this atmosphere, and what do we need to do about it? I think we got to open the dialogue in a much faster and proactive manner. We need to look for early warning signs. We need to understand that anxiety, depression gets a lot of attention, but anxiety is working behind the scenes in a much stronger way. I see anxiety rates that I've never seen before. We need to normalize the search for personal development and self-reflection and not see it as a negative, right? We have terrible mental health coverage in this country, and it's very hard to find care for the general public, right? Um, and but so, don't we, I'm going to stop you for a second, don't we also have to have a conversation about dialing down the pressure on student athletes, whether it comes from absolutely. parents or coaches or just adults in general? I think, I, I don't know if that's a battle we can actually win though, because I think it kind of runs away on its own. What we need to do is better equip the tools of the people that are in those environments. Coaches self-disclosing themselves and coming forward and saying, you know, I see somebody and I work on this myself. That's the best way to model this. We can't change what the world demands of us, but what we can do is better equip ourselves for the tools of how we face those demands. Our relationship in this country to sports has changed, especially when it comes to kids. Sports are really serious yeah. and it starts at a really young age. Do we have to start having a conversation about changing that? We need to focus on the kids that are different maturation levels, different developmental levels, and understand that every kid that shows up to the sport event is bringing different baggage with them. Mm. And we need to connect to them. I think it comes down to the organizations. I think the organizations need to get better resources, train better coaches, get more people involved. How about the parents? 100%. But parents, they love their kids so much they're crushing them. But at the same time, it's hard to not give them everything that's available to them, right? And demand a lot for them but we have to create balance. Whether a kid succeeds or struggles on the field, our behavior must never be connected to their athletic performance. That's the first place to start. When you have tough conversations with athletes and they talk about their parents, what are you hearing from them? They don't want to disappoint them. That's primary. And as parents, we need to make remember to give them that sometimes and let them know it's okay to not be okay. And sometimes all you have to do is send a text to your kid and just say, thinking of you, love you. And that goes a long way. What are the lessons that other schools can learn from Alabama? I think there's a couple facets. One is we see Coach Saban and the, the pioneering leadership that he's had. There's also some great individuals that are pushing the initiatives too. Our athletic trainers here are the primary port, uh, point people for our athletes they are trained on how to focus on the mental health. This is not a mind versus body. This is a fully holistic approach. And we need to empower more athletic trainers to continue to take that role it, it, and believe in their part of that role. And on that note, I mean, an injury can be one of the most significant events that happens to a player's mental Absolutely. health, right? Yep. Detrimental. That's, when an athlete is injured, now they're taking away their comfort and their coping mechanisms. And now they're standing on the sidelines where somebody's replacing them and moving on. And so while they're cheering for the team, there's still that self-loss sometimes of, oh my gosh, they're going on without me. And so our athletic trainers, our sports medicine professionals, our teams are all integrated. And, and I give a lot of credit to our, our surgeons and our medical staff too, because instead of waiting for a problem, 
I'm involved from the minute that they have, you know, they're coming out of recovery or sometimes even prep for surgery to identify what the stresses are going to be. What are the worries? Where are their coping mechanisms? Who do they trust? Who are the people around them? And how do we build that support to help them through that period of time? Thank you for your time. This is such a great conversation to be having. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Start Plus. I'm Jacob Soberoff, filling in for Carson. Coming up, we have got everything you need to know about last night's Emmy Awards. We're going to recap the winners and all of the big moments. Plus, we're going to hear from our friend and Emmy's host, Kenan Thompson, including the show he loves to watch. And life. reunion last night. The actress who played Brady siblings Greg, Bobby, Cindy, Peter, and Jan 2 in the iconic 1970s sitcom hit the red carpet together and Emmy host Kenan Thompson had a fun surprise for fans of the show. During the opening number, he celebrated some of television's most famous theme songs and put a fun spin on the Brady Bunch theme. Watch this, guys. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold, like their mother, the youngest one in curls. <laughs> Let's go! Yes, keep in the middle wow. is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> Taking you wow. to the club oh, this yeah, morning. Right. Oh, just need Marsha, and then you'd have the full. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. All right, next up, Kelly Clarkson, the talk show host, is hitting the road. She kicked off season four of the Kelly Clarkson Show right here in New York City. And what a better way to celebrate than with a Kelly Oki in a show stopping mashup? Kelly covered classics like Willie Nelson's On the Road Again. So good. Madonna's music and Aretha Franklin's Freeway of Love finishing off strong with a little Taylor Swift. Should we just hang it up and watch the rest of that? <laughs> that sounds like a good one. We're no, like, I know, just keep playing it. Yeah, anybody can nail a mashup. Yeah. yeah. Kelly Clarkson. Oh my gosh. She's so good. By the way, you can watch the Kelly Clarkson show weekdays mm -hmm. right here on NBC. And finally, our special guest for Pop Start. It is a very exciting day for the one and only Dylan Dreyer. Her new book, Misty the Cloud, Yay! Friends Through Rain or Shine, is out. <laughs> uh, by the way, the second in a series, the first one, a New York Times bestseller. Well, thank you. Tell us more. Yeah, uh, you know, the first book, when it came out, Rusty was born right before it released. Yeah. So I wasn't able to do, you know, all this in person. It was yeah. all on Zoom. Uh, but now, you know, more than ever, with three kids at home, uh, mm -hmm. the concepts of compromise and sharing mm -hmm. and kindness more important than ever and you know since the story takes place up in the sky and this imaginary world in the clouds uh, when you have Misty and her cloud friends and Ray and her sunbeam friends learning about compromise beautiful things happen I mean what happens when it rains and it's sunny at the same time oh. 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 Your concept from the second you told me about it because I think it's so fitting for little kids. Like yes. their moods, they are like weather yes. systems that kind yes. of blow in and blow it's out. And this is such it, a good way to put it. It's funny how it parallels the weather, you know, yeah. the emotions, and it, it kind of puts a, a face to it. And it also, of course, you know, because I love explaining science to kids in a way they can understand. The back of the book is all about weather and rainbows in this sense and how they're created. Well, you could do some experiments. Can I do it? Go we've ahead. Been, we've been waiting for this book because we've worn out your other one. <laughs> <laughs> 
like, when is the next one? Today is the day. Today is the day. Oh. So a rainbow is a full circle. It's a spoiler from the book, but a yes, rainbow is a full circle. Know? I did yeah. a little reading. Wait, a rainbow yeah. actually makes a full circle, but the horizon cuts it in half. Well, I just, we wanted to, I know that. I just noticed that you dedicated this to Calvin. So guess what? Two more books. <laughs> I know. Sam, <laughs> I know. We gotta get there. Cal Calvin was my co-editor on this oh, whole thing. See? Um, if he didn't like it, it didn't make it in the book. Wow. So. And there's more you need to know, including more Kelly Clarkson news. She teamed up with the legendary Dolly Parton to deliver us a duet of Parton's classic hit, 9 to 5, 40 years after the original. Check this out. The dynamic duo recorded this song as part of the upcoming documentary, Still Working 9 to 5. Starring Parton herself alongside stars like Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, the film chronicles decades of real-life workplace inequality and the women's rights movement. Still Working 9 to 5 premieres this Friday in select theaters. Coming up next, Hocus Pocus 2. The Sanderson sisters are back in a new trailer for the very highly anticipated sequel. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Jimmy reprise their roles as the quirky witches returning to Salem to stir up so much more trouble. Watch. I have a gift for my favorite customers. Legend has it, it's on the 16th birthday that a witch gets her powers. We have to get out of here. The witches will be here any second. Ah! The, the book is alive. He woke up. <gasps> oh. All right, now Hocus Pocus 2 hits Disney Plus on September 30th. And those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Coming up next, a recap of last night's Emmy Awards. Stick with us to see who won big. We'll be right back. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Thanks for being with us here on Pop Start Plus. Maybe you missed last night's Emmy Awards or you need a recap of all the winners. Well, lucky for you, Jason Kennedy brought us everything we need to know from the biggest night in television. This was exactly what we needed, right? A show filled with lots of laughs and some really touching moments. For the first time since 2019, the Emmys were back at the Microsoft Theater here in L.A., where the brightest stars of the small screen took home TV's biggest award. The White Lotus! Taking the top floor at this year's Emmys, HBO's hotel dramedy The White Lotus, winning 10 awards, including Best Limited Series, Supporting Actor, and Supporting Actress for the hilarious Jennifer Coolidge, who refused to be played off stage. Wait, hold on. Okay. Ted Lasso! 
also scoring big, Apple TV Plus's Ted Lasso with four awards, including repeat wins for Best Comedy Series, Lead Actor, and Supporting Actor. This show is about good and evil. It's, this show is about like the truth and lies. This show is about uh, all that stuff. Succession. HBO's hit Succession, winning Best Drama for the second time. Other Emmy repeats include Jean Smart's lead actress win for Hacks, Julia Garner's third supporting actress win for Ozark, Zendaya! and Zendaya clinched her second lead actress for Euphoria. At 26, she's the youngest two-time Emmy winner ever. I try my best every night. I try to like sit down and I like, make my list of all the things like I'm grateful for. SNL veteran Keenan Thompson hosted the fun-filled show, which returned to a pre-pandemic format with nominees closely seated at tables. TV is all we have, from Netflix and chill to Paramount Plus and eating dinner alone. There were also plenty of firsts. Lee Jung Jae won lead actor for Squid Game, the first actor in a non-English series to take the prize. And an emotional Lizzo scored best competition program for her show Watch Out for the Big Girls. When I was a little girl, all I wanted to see was me in the media. Someone fat like me, black like me, beautiful like me. <laughs> Cheryl Lee Ralph. But perhaps the most moving moment came from Cheryl Lee Ralph. And I know where my voice belongs. Who broke into song and earned a standing ovation after winning her very first Emmy, no, Best Supporting Actress for Abbott Elementary. I am here to tell you that this is what believing looks like. Man, what a night. And we have even more on the Emmys. We could not let the show pass without a breakdown of all of the fashion. And Xana Roberts, Rossi, stopped by to guide us. Let's welcome in E! News style host, Zana Roberts Rossi, right there last night. Caught the red eye. You made it in. We're happy to see I you. always heart fought it up that carpet for you, you know, ladies in top fashion. Break it on a scale of one to ten. You've done so many of these I, red I carpets. I think it was an eight. It was really wow. good fun. And you know what? The Emmys carpet is much more relaxed, so it really ran yeah. the gamut. You have razzle dazzle to ped at glamour. Wow. So who who are in your top list? Who are some of your faves? I want to start with Hannah Waddingham. We just yes. saw her in the tape that yeah. she looked fantastic. She had this great Dolce and Gabbana dress on. Mm. So this was basically it took eight weeks in the works. It's a tulle dress, and she was absolutely phenomenal. She balances that line between uh, fairy tale and old school Hollywood, and it was, took 250 meters of tulle to create it's this And those sneakers the made sneakers, it. The sneakers, weren't they fun? Stop. Well, look, she's 5'11". She doesn't need the height. No. And she was bouncing up and down from that stage, collecting awards oh. all night. So it was kind of the perfect addition. Let's talk about Amanda Seyfried. Uh, she won her first Emmy, which was which was great news. It was great. She looked gorgeous, she too. She looked gorgeous in Armani yeah. Privé. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a fully mesh crystal gown. Ooh, wow. This was off, off the runway. Her stylist, um, Elizabeth Stewart, told me that she'd seen this dress, walk the runway, and literally ran backstage after the show to grab it, to reserve oh, it for this very night. One. It's chain mail with this beautiful wispy tulle at the top. And she just looked absolutely beautiful. In real life, this just glittered. It yeah. was stunning. So pretty. Stunning. How about Zendaya? Oh. She won again. Oh. Oh. And she she's do? ruling the red carpet yeah. as well. She can do no wrong this one. So she wore Valentino couture. She always balances that old school Hollywood with the contemporary.